Thank you very much for your kind invitation to this meeting. And uh, today we speak about fly on the ceiling uh, and biological and biomimetic attachment devices based on the, well, scientific data obtained from uh, biomechanical studies on different animals, including insects, spiders, uh, geckos, and so on and so on. Um, well, just before we start this presentation, I would like to introduce what we do in Kiel, in the University of Kiel. Uh, what is our main goal, where we are um, at home, so to speak. So we are a group of biologists, but meanwhile we uh, extend it to several material scientists, engineers, and we are very much interested in um, studying services and interfaces in biology. And if you take... Um, an animal and randomly take an animal, it could be invasive species or whatever, um, and just look at the surfaces which this insect evolved in the long term of the evolution, you could find a lot of functionally interesting surfaces, including sensors on the antenna, some attachment devices, we will discuss that today, um, some um, services which reduce drag, maybe not in this particular animal, but in many others, because this is not really fast moving animal. Optically interesting surfaces like anti-reflectors, um, surfaces which uh, are wear resistance or abrasion resistance in the mouth parts, friction reduction within the joints, sound generation, respiration, thermoregulation, coloration pattern by pigments, but also by, by physical structures, by so-called structure colors. Um, self-cleaning in plants, but of course in many animals, uh, like so-called lotus effect. So you name it. There are so many interesting surfaces from the functional point of view. And of course, these kind of surfaces are, in, are interesting not only for biologists, but also for very much for engineers and material scientists. And uh, we are not very good at chemistry, but we are very good at microscopy and force measurement. That's why we are more concentrate our studies on um, uh, um, micro and nanostructures related effects. So we look at at structures which generate certain certain properties. So and if I show you, we have a, a database uh, of uh, more than eight thousand um, surfaces in biology with certain functions. Some of them are more understood, some less. Uh, this is just a random selection of some images from this database. Here you can find surfaces with um, um, with anisotropic friction, where friction is higher in one direction as in another one, in some joints of, of insects. Here in this image you see structures which reduce drag in some, in, 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 in some flies, for example, on the wings. Here you see some, some anti-reflectors on the omatidia of some insects, so-called omatidia gratings. Um, then you have a couple of filter systems. Here you, 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 you see like a micro hooks, micro velcros. These surfaces can keep um, air underwater, so-called plastron surfaces, or surfaces which, uh, which um, reduce um, contamination, um, like self-cleaning surfaces. This is C and D. Uh, and you see that most of the effects we discuss um, also in this presentation are based mainly on uh, on structure, less on the chemistry. Okay, so our goal is to understand functional principles because uh, if we want to mimic something for the technology, we have to understand well how does it work in biology. And for this purpose, we do some studies of ultrastructure, we measure material properties, force ranging. Uh, and motion in biological systems. In order to do that, we also participate in developing methods like microscopy techniques uh, to, to measure stiffness, hardness of materials, adhesion friction at a local and a global scale means we have to be able to measure forces at the level of the entire animal or at a very, very final, um, final structure like, um, well, micro and nanometer scale. Um, then if we find interesting properties in the system, we try to transfer these natural solutions into material science. And, but I'm a biologist and for me, also a very important part of my, of my work is understanding evolutionary tendencies, how this kind of structure appeared in the biological evolution, how are they developed, and for this purpose we try to do, try to perform broad comparative studies. And it sounds like a very academic um, task, but uh, I would um, 
tell you a very important thing now, um, is that uh, if we um, find that the same solution appear for the same problem appeared many times independently in different groups in the evolution, then we can speak about a kind of optimal solution, maybe only one solution. Or if you find that there are two solutions for the same problem, it is also good news. So I think exactly this kind of um, um, exploration um, uh, are very important to transfer into, into material science. Today we speak about adhesion. Gecko is of course well known, so this is kind of king of adhesion. And um, there are a couple of papers, uh, really seminal papers, by some group from the US, like from Keller Altum in Nature back to 2000. And people find out that uh, these animals use so called Van der Waals interactions in order to uh, attach to any surface. And that's why you see like a yellow press echo with superior climbing skills to atomic power. Because Van der Waals interaction, these are forces between atoms and molecules of two contacting surfaces. Um, sticky secrets and then the question why we should care about these kind of results and the answer is maybe we can use it for any kind of strange technologies um, but well even if we know that geckos use Van der Waals interactions to generate adhesion uh, for us biologists the is the question which structures and what exactly is the relationship between the morphology on the food uh, and uh, and the adhesion animals can generate and of course for engineers important what they should mimic what sh what is our blueprint from biology so this is a good uh, good place where biologists can provide some interesting input and if you discuss again this problem with the engineers and ask them which kind of material do we want to develop, usually they would say, oh, we would like to have something sticky. Well, um, sticky, this is uh, maybe not the question to the gecko. Of course, they can adhere to surfaces, but their adhesion is not that strong. They, the adhesion is comparable with ordinary scotch tape, I would admit. But if our question is, do we want to use it for locomotion on the wall and the ceiling? Uh, and um, it, to adhere extremely fast and adhere to unpredictable surfaces and to uh, have not something which adheres well but also something fast releasable and not only in one cycles but in millions of cycles and to have something which adheres to everything but not to itself uh, surfaces which are not conglutinating by itself imagine if the geckos put um, feet together and they start to, start to stick it's not good at all um, so we have some challenge. So if we want to have this kind of material, then it is challenging. But I would say it is not a big deal to adhere big body weight to the ceiling. So we need just um, a lot of scotch tape. So, well, to counterbalance this body weight, you need a lot of, lot of adhesion. But of course, this is the static situation, what you see on this image, um, because this guy uh, will stay forever on the ceiling, but would not be able to take any step he would be not able to move on the ceiling um, and well in order to master this situation on the ceiling animals have uh, many tricks uh, one of the tricks for example um, is um, the gait pattern for example um, if you look at the fly walking normally on the normal substrate you see this typical tripod gait which means that three legs are in contact and three legs are moving. The, the, the three legs are in stance phase and three legs in the swing phase. Uh, but if you put the, uh, the, the fly on the ceiling, then uh, the gait pattern suddenly changes. Um, in this case, uh, fly move two legs and four legs stays in contact, So, which means it's completely different locomotion program um, for walking on the ceiling, which means that uh, animals are adapted to use not only their elaborate adhesive systems, but they, they also use to adapt their, their entire behavior um, for, um, for walking on the ceiling. And it is even more interesting that, uh, that this gait pattern depends on the ability of animals to adhere. For example, if you look uh, at animals like, uh, like leaf beetles, they have a very strong adhesion. So a safety factor means that they can uh, hold on the ceiling uh, something like 50 own body masses. And these guys, they don't change their locomotion on the ceiling. They continue using this record gait pattern. But 
um, flies, as I mentioned uh, before, they um, um, move two legs and four legs are in contact because their safety factor is something like uh, maybe three or something. Uh, so that's why they try to win one additional contact point. And uh, animals which adhere even lesser, uh, like some, um, some bugs, they use um, um, five legs in contact and one leg in the sequence will be moved. So, okay, okay, behavior is important, that's what we learned from that. But again, in order, in order to master the ceiling situation in a dynamic, dynamical case, uh, we have to counterbalance the weight of the animal uh, with uh, two forces. We have to have certain adhesion um, to prevent falling down the body, and we need some friction to prevent sliding along the ceiling. But, but of course, in this dynamic situation, in the middle of the cycles, when we stick to the ceiling, we have to have sufficient adhesion. But in order to move on the ceiling, we have to solve two more problems. We have to form contact in fast and reliable way and with minimal load on the ceiling. I will tell later on why it is important. And we have to break the, the contact fast. Um, and with minimal force expenditure. Why minimal force expenditure? Because otherwise, imagine if animals would use something like um, scotch tape to walk on the ceiling, then uh, they have to put a lot of force to come into the contact because scotch tape is a pressure sensitive adhesive, and then they have to, to apply a lot of force to, to, to detach from the ceiling. So this is from an energet energetical point of view, would be not a good way of locomotion, especially for animals, uh, for fast predators as geckos. Okay, well, we mainly work um, in um, last years, uh, of course, we worked a little bit on the geckos, but uh, our main topic are, um, are related uh, to insects. So we work on insects. Why? Because insects are extremely diverse. So um, there is about one million of described species, but uh, there are definitely more. And all of them, they have um, uh, tiny little adhesive pads. And these adhesive pads uh, have some diversity, of course, in these diverse groups. And another important point, point to work with, um, uh, with um, um, insects is that uh, they um, adhere to plants and uh, there are about uh, 200 to 250,000 species of plants and plants um, also have a very strong diversity of um, surface properties some of them they are flat some of them they are hairy or covered by tiny little droplets or covered by tiny little particles um, and well insects must adhere on all these surfaces as well so it is interesting to to look if animals this diverse group um, in the evolution develop the same principle of, of attachment or there are many of them or there are several of them so it is a good question to biologists and that's what we did um, we studied more than 600 species um, uh, comparatively using different kind of microscopy including SEM confocal laser scanning microscopy and so on and so on and we find out that there, there are two main solutions and there is no third solution so there are two solutions to make a proper contact with any, almost any kind of surface. So one um, um, solution we call the hairy solution, uh, where surface uh, is composed of hairs, and um, if this kind of surface adhere to flat surface, then of course all these hairs, they immediately, immediately jump into the contact and generate many single contacts. And on the rough surface, they can bend locally and increase um, real contact area with um, most of the roughnesses. In the smooth case, um, it works a little bit similar, but not by the surface structure, but mainly by the internal structure of material, because the material is structured in order to flow into the crevices, flow into the into the um, um, uh, surface gaps, and uh, replicate. Uh, uh, substrate as good as possible. So, if you know that, my claim is that it doesn't matter which basic physical forces are um, involved in the adhesion. If you want to adhere well, you have to solve the contact problem. So, this contact problem solution has two aspects. You either make kind of micro structure, uh, which uh, adapting to the surface profile, or you make something which is very soft and uh, adaptable uh, due to the material properties. Um, and if you look at 
evolutionary tree of insects. This is actually doesn't matter. You don't have to know all these groups, but um, if you um, if you map um, these two um, types of systems, uh, like smooth and hairy, you see that the first system that appeared in the insect evolution was the was the smooth system, which means that. Um, some animals, some insects in the in the early evolution, um, um, get the surfaces which, uh, due to the material properties, were adaptable enough to generate some adhesion. And uh, well, this is the first evolutionary track. And the second one, the hairy structures, they appeared later in the evolution of insects, but they appeared at least three times independently in the insect evolution. The same um, is for um, for smooth system. They also appeared three times independently, at least three times independently in the insect evolution. Um, if you if you, for example, if we speak about hairy structures, spiders and geckos, they also have adhesive hairs, which are definitely they are not insects. Uh, then I would say if we speak about um, animal uh, adhesion for locomotion, then we speak about at least five time independent evolvement of the hairy adhesive structures. Well, this is the animal, this is the grasshopper with a smooth system and indeed these uh, structures in the binocular microscope they look so-called eoplantal in this case they look quite smooth but if you use cryo SEM so if you freeze this structure um, and break them you see that the internal structure of material is like um, uh, fibers which are branching in the vicinity of the surface uh, branching many times, so it is kind of hierarchical internal structure, and the gaps between the fibers are filled with the fluid. So you can imagine that you have a um, stiff system because this is a kind of chitin-based material. It's quite quite stiff fibers, but because of the high spec ratio, um, they are quite floppy. So the whole system is very very adaptable, very soft, and uh, if you have a fluid in between, you can expect some viscoelastic properties and we also measure uh, and characterize these viscoelastic properties. The material behaves like more or less, um, um, I would say, like a pudding, which adapt itself to different kind of surfaces and generate fluid in the contact area. We will discuss that later. Um, this is more or less random selection of such a hairy structures, and here you see a couple of beetles, a couple of flies, a couple of air wigs. What you see on all these surfaces are hairs. And of course, people from the technology, especially from nanotechnology, they say, well, nowadays to generate little hairs is not a problem. We can do that. And then, uh, uh, starting from something like 2002, people started to, to well, to develop this kind of gecko-inspired um, surfaces. Maybe one of the um, maybe one of the first publication was this one, and here you see that the colleagues uh, take um, some um, polymer bumps and um, they use atomic force microscopy and measure adhesive forces at the tip of every single bumps. Then multiply these adhesion measured on the single bumps by number of the bumps, and then they end up with a huge forces, which I expected for these surfaces. But if you use this, the entire surface for adhesion, then um, unfortunately it doesn't stick really well. So actually this kind of surface is more or less anti-adhesive surface, because the bumps prevent good contact formation. And if you make these, uh, these uh, um, sharp uh, pointed bumps, then uh, adhesion will be even, even further reduced. So it is, it is even better anti-adhesive surface. So then uh, maybe this paper showing these very long aspect ratio fibers, and of course, as soon as you generate such a long floppy fibers, they immediately start to stick together and never come apart again. So um, starting with the bulk material, with bulk unstructured material, you structure it, and in this very moment, everything sticks together and generate for you bulk material again. So it doesn't work. Um, okay, some of the solution looks uh, nice in the SEM, like this image. Um, some of them, yeah, but in this case, the material which was selected was quite quite stiff and that's why it doesn't adhere because too stiff material. So well some of them they also collapse or condense. Also here you see this collapse collapsing and condensation here also. Um, so it is a problem. So how to solve the problem of good adhesion and um, keeping structure apart? 
Um, well, let's go back to our animals. I would say in order to answer this question, we have to do a little bit more. What we have to do is to look, this is the fly foot again, and we have to understand motorics and arrangement of muscles within the tarsus. We have to understand how do the joints are moving. We have to understand sensors, which helping in positioning the leg at the right position to generate strong contact. Um, we need um, to do something or to understand something about the forces and their directionality about the potential substrates where these animals move and, as I mentioned, insect generate fluid in the contact area, which, of course, change the basic physical forces contributing to adhesion. Today we will discuss mainly contact mechanics because it's quite crucial for good adhesion and it is quite exciting what nature well developed uh, maybe we start with again with a comparative study not only insects but let let looks at the hairs of uh, at the sticky hairs of different animals here we see some beetles flies spiders geckos all of them they have hairs but you see that the dimension of the hairs are different and quite surprisingly the larger is the body mass of the animal group the the, the smaller will be this um, this final terminal contact elements so, which means that in, with the increasing of the body mass of the animal group, the density of the structure per unit area becomes stronger and the size of the structure becomes lower, which is quite interesting and quite unexpected. And, um, um, but in any case, this structuring plays an important role. And the, the, the question is, how can we make an experiment to prove that the, the hairs, that the structure is really important for adhesion? And in this moment, I would say it is, of course, quite difficult to, um, to work with animals because all of them, they have quite different chemistry of their hairs, quite different material properties. Some of them have, have fluid, as I mentioned, insects, and these, uh, these guys, um, uh, um, spiders and geckos, they, they don't have fluid. It's really dry adhesion. So um, it is difficult to make a good comparative study from the mechanical point of view. That's why in this moment we switch to the polymers, we switch to the like biomimetic structure. So we generate like little pillars um, in the well micrometer range, like 100 microns. And um, we measured adhesion of the, the same polymer, unstructured polymer and structured polymer. And the result is if we compare adhesive strengths, adhesive strengths means adhesion, adhesion per unit area. So like if you want it is the stickiness of the material, then you see that unstructured material adheres much worse than the structured material, which is quite exciting, which means that material is the same, but just because of well, actually gaps, because you generate nothing else as gaps, um, you increase stickiness, which is quite exciting. But the problem is uh, the contact formation, because uh, in order to make a proper contact with this structure, you have to play a lot, maybe 10 minutes to bring all these structures in contact. Um, animals do that in 10 milliseconds. What do they have different to generate not only strong and stronger adhesion but also fast adhesion and the explanation is that um, there are, it has something to do with the contact shape of the structures um, because there are some spherical contact elements some flat torus like there are even some suction cups quite seldom case but um, maybe here you see the one of the smallest suction cups in the world like 10 to 15 microns but interestingly that um, the most of the animals which can walk on the ceiling have this kind of band like or spatula like structures um, which is quite unexpected and, and quite unusual. Why we have this kind of spatula-like structure? Here you see the beetle uh, terminal element of one single hair. And of course beetles have on their feet uh, thousands of hairs. And so it is quite interesting. This is the kind, kind of flattened tape and you can imagine that this flattened tape, uh, which is only uh, 200 nanometer thick, can, because of very easy bendability and it can adapt to the surface profile at the nanometer scales. Here you see the scratch on the surface and these tiny little band can uh, jump into the contact and quickly generate um, a good contact and good adhesion even with, uh, with some uh, unevenness of the surface. Of course a uh, flat, smooth surface is not challenging. In the case of flute, uh, the flat um, surface, um, this plate will immediately generate good contact, that's clear. 
Okay, um, um, so because of low bending stiffness, it adapts well to the surface profile. And if you want to increase um, uh, contact area, we just can share this structure. We don't have to press on the surface. We just share that in this direction, in this direction, towards the body. Um, and then, well, we don't have to press on the surface, so we can control and bring all the thousand hairs immediately in contact just by sharing the platelet um, covered by this kind of hairs. Um, okay, uh, this was the beetle, so now we move to the gecko. Geckos, they have a um, um, so-called zeta, which are hair-like structure, 100 to 150 microns long. If we zoom in at the tip, you see that this structure um, branching in the vicinity of the contact surface several times and is terminated. Here you see high magnification and you see these terminal branches of one single zeta. So one single zeta generate not just one contact, but, but again thousands of contacts. And uh, you see that it's terminated by the spatula. And if you make a, a longitudinal section through the spatula, you measure that the thickness is just 10 to 15 nanometers, which is 20 times thinner as in the case of the of the beetle, which means that um, uh, this kind of very, very thin material, this is just, a, well, 7 to 10 single carotene molecules, um, 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 the, the, which correspond to the thickness of the platelet, and you can imagine this material can behave like a, like a fluid, it is adapt to any kind of roughness, even molecular roughness, that's why geckos, they don't need any fluid, but in the case of the, of the insects because the, 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 the this terminal tip thickness is is is, is relative thick um, it can um, um, adhere only if there is some uh, uh, fluid which um, helps to adapt to the molecular roughness so the plate itself adapt to the nano roughness but to adapt to the molecular roughness um, it needs some uh, some fluid Okay, if we consider the same structure, if we study the same structure in the cryo SEM, so you see the fresh contacts of the fly, spider, and geckos. What you see in common, all these animals generate contact with such a plate-like plate structure, with, with um, spatulas. Um, and, and of course, from evolutionary point of view, these animals have nothing to do with each other. But I would claim that by knowing that, um, this is a good idea to, well, to provide this information to the engineers, because uh, if we want to walk one day on the ceiling, maybe we have to do something similar. All systems we study, they have certain level of hierarchy, um, which means that um, um, the real surface, rough surface, all the surfaces which surround us, maybe with, a, with an exception of the windows of the glass, uh, are rough, and this roughness is what we call fractal, because there is a, a macro roughness or waviness, and then if we zoom in there is a micro roughness, if we zoom in further there is a nano roughness. So in order to adapt to all these roughnesses, we have to have something in our adhesive system which adapt to the waviness, which adapt to the uh, micro roughness to the nano roughness and to the molecular roughness and this is the reason why adhesive system of the animals are hierarchically built to adapt to all these roughnesses so this is pulvilli of the of the fly um, so these tiny little hairs they are standing not on the rigid plate but on a very bendable structure and adaptable to the waviness then for the micro roughness these tiny little stalks of the hairs are responsible. Then we have spatula adaptable to the micro roughness, and then we have a we have a fluid which is adaptable to even finer roughness. In the case of gecko, there is no fluid, but um, there are hairs which are branching many times and adapting to different level of roughness. And then finally, we have this uh, tiny little spatula at the tips adapting to the molecular roughness. But it is even more exciting, and this is not a whole story, because uh, of course most of us biologists using um, um, using um, 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 scanning electron microscopy to study um, uh, these these little tiny little structures. But um, for example, this is the the, the lateral view of the tarsus uh, or one tarsomer of the tarsus of the ladybird beetle. And, um, and here you see some gradient of, of the lengths. Uh, at the distal part, the length of the hair is stronger. At the base, the length of the hairs is shorter. Um, but there are 
completely different gradients uh, you can explore if you use different kind of microscopy, like confocal laser scanning microscopy. With this kind of microscopy, you can reveal um, the material um, distribution, you can reveal the material composition. So everything which is um, um, yellowish reddish here, it is cross-linked cuticle, it is tanned cuticle, and everything which is blue, it is a kind of rubber-like material. So which what we learn from that is that the tips of the hairs, they are much, presumably much more soft than the base of the hair. There is a gradient also of material properties. And you can do some atomic force microscopy study in which you can make nano indentation. You measure material properties along the hairs and try to correlate it with the color uh, of the confocal lesion scanning microscopy. If you do that, you indeed realize that at the tip of the hairs, um, the material is 10,000 times softer than at the base. So there is a gradient of four orders of magnitudes, four orders of magnitudes difference. If you dry the feet, then um, there is no difference. So the dried material at the tip um, um, become as stiff as cross-link material. So which means that the material at the tip is a kind of hydrogel, it's something which is hydrated and make material sticky and adaptable. So, but all, if everything sticks so well and if um, we understand the principle of adhesion, the question is how do animals detach from the surface and there are several different um, possibilities. Um, um, for example, in the case of the fly, they can use uh, clothes um, to lever to lever out um, the pulvilli. It is like a peeling at a global scale. That's what we do if we detach scotch tape from the surface. Or animals can uh, can shift the leg forward and by this they, they perform peeling at a local scale, at a scale of every single hair, because it's shifting in this direction, we detach by peeling of every single hair. Or animals sometimes twist the hairs. Uh, of course, uh, um, it is very quick detachment. That's what they do usually with the middle leg. But sometimes they pull in the direction of the highest force. Uh, it happens seldom, but uh, in, in some situations they do that. Well, the challenge is, if we want to do something useful for the industry, if we want to do something useful for, the, for, for people uh, to generate new kind of services and materials, we have to integrate, based on what I told you right now, we have to integrate um, all these um, features, um, for example, dimension and density of the structures, uh, aspect ratio is important, the slope of the structure is important, hierarchical um, uh, organization is important, shape of the contact, asymmetry in combination with a proper motion during attachment and detachment, uh, gradient materials are important, you remember, and uh, sometimes uh, it is important to put some nanostructure to prevent um, con condensation to prevent that the hairs stick to each other, uh, to keep the to keep two hairs apart. So where we are now with development of this structure. So we worked many years together with a company, which um, 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 developed different kind of fasteners, and um, based on what I told you right now, we uh, taking some bio-inspired features and try to combine with the existing technology because many biological features they are so fine and they are so complicated that they are difficult to really rebuild it in the artificial system, and of course it is impossible to make a uh, exact copy of the of the gecko hair. That's why we just taking this inspiration and, and make a, some abstraction. So we say what we need is the contact subdivision. We have to pack this kind of structure densely. We need uh, this kind of um, spatula or plate-like head structure and joint-like neck. And we need certain aspect ratio of the structures uh, in order to reach all this function I mentioned here. And that's what we did. And the result was um, that uh, this is the adhesive strength of the continuous contact, of the flat contact. This is the adhesive strength of the material I showed you at the beginning of this lecture. And this is the, the adhesive strength of the, uh, the mushroom-like structure. You see that with um, decreasing the, the then the, the size of single features uh, similarly to what we see in the nature and with applying some important uh, features at uh, at single hairs like this uh, hat like um, uh, or mushroom like structures we can 
increase adhesion dramatically, um, uh, um, almost to one order of magnitude. And of course, people realize that that's why, starting from 2005, many people uh, really followed this idea. And uh, there are numerous publications just on these mushroom-like structures. And uh, the question is why these mushroom-like structures work so well. Well, the explanation is why mushrooms are so cool is that uh, they jump immediately into the contact. Look, this is the high-speed um, uh, high video or sequence of high-speed videos. Uh, how if we approach with a the, with the single mushroom, what happened into the contact? So we approach usually with one side because it is impossible to keep them absolutely parallel. And then the, 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 the contact is immediately, we call it healing, is immediately building from one side to another side and it happens in four milliseconds very similar to the to the um, uh, adhesion formation in flies and geckos it's very fast process but if we detach you see the detachment happen from the middle to the to the to the circumference and because of this at the detachment we have the cracking line corresponding to the perimeter not to the diameter at the contact formation um, in the middle of the cycles we had a diameter of the structure at the detachment we have the perimeter which uh, if we multiply by the number of single contacts um, um, it will be it will be much uh, longer crack line and the crack line uh, length is responsible for uh, for the adhesive strength so we immediately increase adhesion but you would say probably because if you see this void formation immediately you would say oh this may be maybe suction but i would say no this is not suction for this purpose we make a uh, made an, an experiment in uh, um, at ambient pressure and at reduced pressure in vacuum and you see that there is almost well statistically no significant difference uh, between these two conditions. So, in fact, you, uh, what we learned from that, you can use our material for the space applications um, because you can use it in vacuum and it adheres as, as well as in the uh, ambient conditions and there is still difference, a big difference to the smooth material. So, definitely, this effect is not based on the suction. So, if you do it at low velocity, if you do it at high velocity, you can see some contribution of suction, but quasi-statically there is no difference so which means that this principle is based just on the on the contact formation and specific contact breakage but not on the suction um, well what about adhesion underwater because uh, insects very much exposed especially um, after rain to um, to fluted conditions um, and here you see a short video of our ladybird beetle which is a terrestrial beetle uh, but you see in the aquarium, you see here as a neighbor is the fish swimming and um, um, this beetle can perfectly walk on, on the glass surface uh, underwater. And then if you carefully look at the tips of the legs, you will see tiny little silvery appearance because animals can trap air and um, um, under the microscope in the dry conditions you would have these pictures uh, the, the the single hairs are adhering um, to the surface to the glass surface and here it is underwater so animals trap the, the, the air bubble underwater take it underwater and um, uh, de-wet the surface and under this air bell still generate adhesion on the dry surface uh, it is quite exciting we can repeat this experiment and you see that um, in fact, um, uh, in the dry condition, we have certain adhesion. Underwater, adhesion goes down if the material is completely um, wetted. But if material um, uh, trapped air, we can generate underwater even stronger adhesion than in the air, which is a good news for the um, for the for, for interesting uh, potential applications. Well, uh, what about the roughness? We said the roughness is quite challenging and. Uh, the result is that uh, animals, uh, but also our scotch tape, of course, um, cannot adhere to any kind of roughness. They adhere to the smooth surface extremely well. They can also adhere to the rough surfaces quite well. But there is so-called critical roughness, uh, which is uh, correspond approximately to the size of the feature of the single structure. And uh, this critical roughness adhesion is minimized and uh, at this critical roughness animals uh, real animals they start to clean feet because they think if the force is is decreasing 
then cleaning activity um, um, is, is increasing. If the force is increasing, the cleaning activity is decreasing. It doesn't mean that the feet are dirty, but uh, this, uh, this feeling of not sufficient adhesion um, um, force animals to, um, to clean their feet. Uh, but what about the contamination indeed? So if you make, if you make an experiment um, with um, um, structured material and with a smooth material, then you see that the structured material is of course contaminating, but not that fast as a smooth material, uh, which is again a very important point, and the question is why. The explanation is quite simple, um, because uh, the particles, the environmental particles, they, uh, they are first packed in between the features, and um, these uh, little heads, these uh, plate-like structures, still exposed to the environment and remain clean for a while. As long as it remains clean and dirt is packed in between, uh, we still can generate quite sufficient adhesion. But even if the material is completely contaminated, we can wash it out, and after 300 cycles, and uh, if you take this contaminated material with a low adhesion, after washing, the entire adhesion is coming back. Because it's not based on the chemistry, but it is mainly based on the, um, on the, on the structure, on the, on the contact geometry. Well, what, is, what it can be used for? Of course, uh, there are some applications for the medicine, and I think the company we're working with uh, is mainly thinking on the special applications. But of course, you can build a robot which can walk on the wall by using this kind of material. This is one of the first um, version of our material, and this was worked together with the with uh, the group at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland. Um, and you see that this is not a scotch tape because the material jump out of the contact immediately. You don't have to pull strongly um, on the material. And you see that the robot is walking um, effortless on the glass. And if you will see if the robot is falling down, it will be captured by the, by the material again and can continue walking on the ceiling. OK, there you see, it's continue walking. Uh, you can use it for such a pick and drop system. So in this case, this uh, cell phone uh, weighed about 100 gram. The robot was weighing about 140 gram. So the the piece of the of this gecko tape, uh, we call it gecko tape, uh, is something like one square centimeter, and um, you can run it like 6,000 cycles without. Uh, cleaning and uh, it works quite well and there is no residues on the surface because this is not a chemical adhesion this is adhesion similar to and of course you can bring the guy on the ceiling um, this is uh, our um, technician his weight about 60 kilogram and uh, we have here something like 15 by 15 um, centimeter um, um, gecko tape and the guy can, st can can hold on the ceiling. Okay, I'm at the end of my talk. I hope I convinced you that studying animals and studying some functional systems, functional services can bring something for technology. And this is our challenge and this is our fun and uh, this is our hope also for engineering and material science to explore more because nature is sort of endless in uh, um, the offered solution. So today I hope I convince you that doing comparative zoology, comparative experimental approach, um, because of a similar solution appeared many times independently in the evolution, um, the comparative approach aids in revealing essential structure function relationship for a particular problem. Um, in relationship about the system we discussed, um, geckos and insects and adhesion, multiple contacts are important, terminal elements and contact formation are, are very important, and as you see, biomimetics is quite promising um, in, in, uh, in, in, um, in the, such a microstructure polymer-based system. Well, thank you very, thank you very much for invitation, for listening to this talk, and I hope you have um, some questions. Please ask them now or send me an email. Uh, you got um, the entire information about um, 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 the address, the email. Please visit us uh, in Kiel virtually or in, in presence. Thank you so much again. Bye-bye.